Hey there, some time ago the Prime Merchant recorded a beautiful video about JavaScript versus Go, error handling and asynchronous functions. In this really beautiful video, I um, highly recommend it to watch it till the end. Uh, but uh, let's have a sneak preview of uh, what it's all about. Yeah, it would look something like this, right? And that's kind of annoying. Can we all agree that we don't like that? We like this. So no more um, uh, spoilers, but the topic of error handling resonated with me so much that I had actually inspired this video. And I think that the proper error handling is the big part of success in any product. And I really like that the TypeScript ecosystem slowly draws the ideas from other languages. For example, this result type from, from Rust. This is a great way to represent the computation that may fail. So this uh, result type has two constructors, OK or error, quite self-explanatory. But the bottom line is that the function always returns the value no matter what happens uh, you always return the value so this function becomes total uh, but this idea is not new um, to, to Rust it actually has been around in Haskell for quite some time so in Haskell there is a similar type called either and it takes uh, two values of type a and b and the value of type either can can be constructed with either left or right constructors and left is used for uh, errors right is used for a good value and in one of my favorite languages Elm um, it actually uh, goes like this. If you treat errors as data, then you will not see runtime errors, which is a pretty bold claim, but it's true. I mean, in Elm, there are no nulls or undefines or exceptions. And this can be achieved by using the custom types like it is shown in this example in Elm. So there's the function to age, which takes a string and tries to uh, parse an integer out of it. And it returns the value of maybe age, which can be constructed using age constructor or invalid input. And therefore, if we give a gibberish uh, input into this function, uh, we get invalid input. And I completely agree with this statement that here, instead of just saying that the input is invalid anyhow, uh, we actually give some meaningful feedback to whoever uses our functions and then uh, communicates with users because that what creates the business value. In Rescript, there are also exceptions, but there are just special kinds of variants and we should not abuse them. In this example, uh, it shows how this function may raise an exception and how the user of this function may catch it. But in reality, a much preferred option would be to return the option of the value. In TypeScript, we can achieve a similar outcome using TS results library. This library implements result and option objects. And if we look at the example here, it shows how this function that throws an exception um, in case something goes wrong may actually return a value. If you look at the signature of this function, read file, it takes a string and gives you a string, but that's not the complete truth. However, here we say that read file can take a string and give us the result of string and some error type. I prepared my own example of how to use this library with promises. And the basic idea is that instead of rejecting promises, we always resolve them with the result type. As an example, here's the getJSON function that fetches some JSON from a given URL, and it returns a promise of result of some T and string as a error type. And the bottom line is that if something goes wrong, for example, here, we return the error instead of throwing an exception. Here, we return the OK value, so it, it succeeded. And here we also return the uh, error in case something went wrong. And of course, we can elaborate on this simple example and make it a bit more uh, robust. We can introduce decoders to make sure that the uh, data that we received uh, from um, our server is actually what we expect. And uh, here I use the decoder, which can also fail. So in case our decoder is not OK, uh, we also return the error. And of course, we can take it one step further and elaborate on what kind of network errors we can expect. So for example, we can have a case for unauthorized request or some sort of network condition or like bad status, bad body, whatever, uh, you can get creative here. But the type signature does not change. It's still promise of result T network error. So now the users of this uh, get JSON function, for example, here in the to do service, they can expect that the uh, result will be of this type result of our 
array of to do's and network error. So now in case we received an error, we, we can turn this into, uh, let's say to do's error, just to make sure that our users benefit from these error messages. And we as a developers can also benefit from them because we could log uh, meaningful error messages. Also, it makes it a bit easier to recover from these errors. So finally, this pattern propagates to our controller where uh, we use our service and our uh, to do's result will be the result of array of to do's or to do's error. So now now, let's say we use file system we don't really care it's it's the business of to do service to handle file system errors as you can see this pattern is actually very similar to what go suggests however we can handle the uh, error case and success case uh, either with uh, if statement like this or with uh, like more functional, so to speak, style with maps and, and map error and, and whatnot. And I find this approach quite robust because no matter what library we use, so here we used fetch, which may throw an error or uh, reject a promise, uh, it doesn't really matter because then we don't really have to make sure that somebody who uses our function would have to handle rejected um, promise or throw an exception. So this is the point where we integrate something that we cannot control into the R system that we do control. And by using this kind of API uh, without rejecting promises, we can guarantee that our program will continue and handle the errors gracefully. So watch the video till the end. It's very interesting. Uh, the link will be in the description below and I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.